Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we will be showing you how to install and create a archive box server. Um, archive box is kind of um, similar to like web archive. Um, I think that's what it was called. Or oh, way back machine, way back machine. That's 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 what it is. And we're kind of like essentially get get a snapshot of a web page for you and saves it so you can actually look at it back from you know that day date and time. So um, this is kind of useful if you like. Oh, you have an article that you want to read maybe later, or you want to see something that uh, you saw posted a while back. This is kind of a solution for you. I don't personally have many uses for this, but I thought it was pretty cool, so I thought I'd share and show you guys how it how it uh, you, how you can create it. So, this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So, if you enjoy my content, want to sponsor me, or send me some free swag, let me know. My email is in the description below. So, let's get started, guys. All right. So, what we'll do here is log into our server. I think we're finally on 50. All right, 50. And then the first thing that we will need to do is actually uh, install Docker um, because this is another Docker container that we can use. Um, personally, I, I'd like just using Docker containers over like installing software um, on machines um, because usually um, when it boils down to it, you know, they don't test every single operating system. They don't test all the packages in versions. So if you have a doc container that they've already kind of built all together, that is usually my go-to um, to make it work. So while that installs, we will also update DNS in our GitLab instance. Um, so we'll go to GitLab project, go to web IDE. Um, we will update our zone. So we'll make sure we update the serial and then we will add this in here and archive a box in a and 172.61.50. And if you see other interesting things in this DNS entry, um, there has already been a video created about it. So feel free to look through my home lab series videos. Um, you might find something interesting. Um, all these are something that I've created um, in a video sometime in this probably like last like few months. Um, I've been trying to grind daily videos. So obviously we've gotten a lot so far. So, all right, let's add archive box. All right, so now what's set on that? So archive box. Um, your open source IO thingy. Um, we'll go to the Docker Hub. And I believe there is a quick start. Let's see, quick start. There's a quick start, guys. Oh, see, quick start below. It doesn't actually link. <laughs> um, okay. That's optional. There is a. Oh, here it is. It goes down here. It just didn't, didn't link. So we'll do the Docker Compose um, because that will be. Um, what we want to do. So Docker's installed. So we'll do systemctl enable docker, systemctl start docker. And then we will also need docker compose installed. And we'll grab that compose file from the GitHub repo. And then we'll make sure that the file is executable. So we are all set with the Docker stuff. So what we want to do here, let's follow directions. Um, so we just step one. So step two is make the directory and grab the docker compose file in here docker compose and we got it so now we should be able to see docker compose um, let's make this slightly bigger because i think there's more stuff in here yeah so a lot of this is commented out this is if you want you know specific services in regards to in addition to what it's running but for the most part you got your services for the archive box you got the data volume you got um a few things so you can do some limits or allow which hosts that you want um and it runs on 8000 so that's that's something to know um but we'll run the setup to create that i'm a user here um did it actually paste not to paste. Copy and paste. So we'll run the setup. It will download and pull the archive box container. Easy, right? Um, but I mean, from from my you know few uses of this, it's pretty simple. You pretty much just hit the URL that you want, and it will essentially kind of like just download the thing, download the pages. Um, you can look in their GitHub. Um, there is a few extra notes, I think, in here of f specific features. Um, so, like, it supports 
um, a lot of screenshots and stuff like that, HTML, JSON. Um, they do do, it looks like, um, you, the YouTube DL. Um, this is where I will do a plug. Tube Archivist does a pretty good job of archiving uh, or downloading YouTube videos for you to watch offline um, in your own home. Um, I, I do that for you know a few of my videos and a few training stuff for you know when you lose when you lose internet and you're like well what else am I gonna do if you still have power um, it's it's a great way to just watch you know YouTube videos that you've downloaded for um, tutorial purposes. So um, but well that is okay so now we got to the login so we'll we'll create a lo user login so we'll leave archive box as the username um, we'll just enter dragon at dragon.local for our email and we will set a password and we will confirm that password and hope <laughs> the passwords match. It didn't match. And now it matches. Okay, so now it's configured all the things that it needs to configure. Um, so in here, I think the next step was just do a docker compose up. Hit span. Yep, docker compose up. So we're going to do a docker compo compose up and then hyphen D to have it detached. I don't actually run it, want the output to be running on my screen, um, which is fine. If you do, no biggie. Okay, so now we can see that it is starting um, after a few seconds and starting. All right, so what we should be able to do is go to HTTP archive box dot dragon dot local 3000. Um, it's still starting, so it might give it a minute for it to actually healthy. All right. Did I spell it wrong? Oh, 8,000. 8,000, guys. 8,000. Man. You know it's going to be a long day when you can't even type in the right, <laughs> right poem. Okay, so... Um, archive box and we can log in here and with the password and you can see that you know there's there's some admin stuff that you can see over here but what we want to do is this is where you can add a URL so say for example we want to archive that page right um, actually we don't need specifically the quick stop but we can archive that page so there's a few things that you can pick um, I don't know specifically which one you should pick and why you should pick any of these I just kind of got this and I'm like yeah kind of just let it go so we'll just leave it everything as default um, you can kind of see there's a lot of archive methods so you can select you know one two or just one or if you don't select any of them uh oh oh well I, I might have to reload the page if you don't select any of them it'll use all of them by default so let's not select any of them and then you can kind of see how how it works so then we can add a URL so when you do this, it will start indexing. You can check the logs page. You can also leave this page because the job runs in the background, but we'll just open up a new page. So there's like a lot of words here that probably don't make any sense, honestly, in my opinion, um, because it's just like logs. It's like, oh, okay. It's just ran this command, ran that command. Okay. Um, the, the thing that you want to see is if you go to snapshots, you can go to the snapshot here and then you can go view snapshot index and then you can see this is this is what it actually grabbed. So it's not fully archived because it's still running. Um, but you can see that in here, I actually was able to grab this page and it you know downloaded all the images, downloaded all the pictures, so you can actually see. So great thing if you want to like read articles or tutorials and things like that, um, and you need it like offline because you you are, are changing your firewall and you can't get it to work because you're service provider has a specific VLAN that you need to go look back up after you get the internet back up. Yeah, yeah, been there, done that. But yeah, that's essentially it. That's how you can archive a site. You can obviously do multiple sites um, and you can do as many as you want pending you have enough space essentially. <laughs> so, but if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.